I'm going to mute this here and I'm going to hit play. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and assume this is working. Yeah, it sure is. All right, here we go, everybody. The show starts right freaking now. There's one thing you should know. No one uses that flaming sword without my say-so. Whoopsie doopsie. The Morning Stream. If you have job, you wear the pants. Hello, everybody. Welcome to TMS. It's the Morning Stream on this Eclipse Monday. Turn around. <laughs> It's uh, April 4th, or 8th, rather, uh, 2024. We got a 4 8 24. It's a lot of fours and Ooh, divisible fours. And, yeah. It's too bad. It's, it's almost a math problem. We missed the math problem on uh, on Saturday, which had been 4 6 24. But, oh, uh, yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, that'll come around again oh, in well. another 20 oh, well. years. Like the eclipse, we'll get it in a, uh, just everyone live long enough. <laughs> we have a partial it. math problem in our... In our <laughs> that's right. Uh, it's good to see yeah. you all, though, and I uh, hope you're all doing well on this uh, lovely day. I'm Scott, and that's Brian, and we have a show to do. We have stuff to talk about. That's right. That's right. Important issues laying at our feet. It's up to us to pick it up, make sense of it, and purvey mm-hmm. it to you guys. Uh, 420 will be 200424, Claire says. That's interesting. Yeah, I like that. Except that's just the way you guys do dates. We don't do it that way, right? right or no, right. yeah, because we put the four first. We put the month first, then the day, then the year. I know we've so, talked about it before, but why did we do, did we rebel? Is that us rebelling? Why do we do it different? Than I don't know why we why that is. Uh, America. Yeah, America. Rebelling. America. Yeah. I you know if it were me, we would put the year first, then the month, then the day because. You can write that in a file name, and alphabetically, it'll always be correct. It'll always come up in the correct uh, order. Whereas if you do day and then month, your you know all of your uh, first of the months are going to be first, and then your seconds of all the months, all twelve months will be there. And That's a really good point. Yeah. Why should, uh, Why don't we all do that? That's a good idea. All, let's all switch to that. There yeah. How are we supposed to keep our Dewey Decimal System correct if we don't? <laughs> sure. If we don't do that, that. Cuz that would be such a pain in the butt right to go say uh oh hey when is your band going to be performing? Oh on 202404 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe oh, we can. Cool. I can't wait to go see you. <laughs> just from a like a just a storage. Per- maybe we are. Maybe they do this with computers and stuff, and I just don't know it. Maybe they do store dates this way. Some programmer, let me know. Hey, we you did, know what we did when we were programming at the the newspaper software company? Because I, um, I had that set up in my support system, uh, the system I used to track all the technical support, and which I built in freaking SuperCard. Oh my lord. Had had like a a card for every client, and then a list underneath it of all of their support calls. And this was before, um, what's the big one? Uh, sales, sales, uh, Salesforce, Salesforce, Salesforce. Yeah, yeah, Salesforce. This was before Salesforce was a thing. Basically, I created our first uh, CRM at the company, and we all used it. And yeah, it was great. It was great. We could look up any previous support issue that they've had and said, "Oh, you actually called about this two years ago, and we solved it for you by doing this." So just do that. Yep. Look up SuperCard, kids. It will explain yeah, everything. Or, or HyperCard. Or Hyper. Remember what did I say? Mist? Did I say SuperCard? <laughs> I meant HyperCard. Well, SuperCard was the advanced version of HyperCard. Oh, it what? Was oh, the, it was actually a SuperCard? Yeah. Oh. There was a SuperCard. It was, yeah, HyperCard um, evolved into SuperCard, or at least that was the commercial, like create commercial applications with SuperCard. It was, uh, that had Super Nintendo, uh, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> did you uh do you ever put um uh do you ever have to do anything with uh, access microsoft access we had yes. to build something with that i freaking hated access oh hated really it. i love Ugh. i don't know what it is about relational databases and saying okay this is going to be my index record and here's and then drawing like his oh with with access you could actually draw the little pathways to say okay this um uh this field here pulls from this separate database by matching whatever comes up in this other thing. Oh, I loved it. I, I, I like relational I database that. stuff, but that thing, for whatever reason, we just always had issues. Something got corrupted yeah. every other day. Yeah. yeah. That was our <laughs> only complaint. And we was always on this external drive that nobody trusted. I don't know. These were weird, heady days, you guys. This is yeah, back in the day. We don't know. I was using we FileMaker going. Pro back then too, and oh. once they added a relational databases, it was it was all over. I created a big music database to store all my 
records and single like the individual songs so that I could pull up, you know, uh, uh, covers that I'd played on previous shows and stuff like that. And then it's like, oh, well, I can do 99% of this in Apple Music just by using the description and comments fields. So mm. I'm going to switch to doing that. Mm. I was going to ask you what you use today. I guess that makes sense. Why Why not? Yeah. You don't have to reinvent the wheel yeah. if they already give you No, I time. mean, I can, I, by typing something into a field, I can tell you what songs I played on a certain episode or uh, pull up a list of, of an artist, all the songs, the covers that uh, of their songs, and tell you which episodes I've played those covers in. So if I said... Uh, and you could do. You could also use this as data to find out what guy, what's been played the most, right? So both yes. that both sides now song you love so much by um, yeah, Jason Faulkner. Jason Faulkner, you probably Jason Faulkner, baby. That one's probably a big old. You know, he's um, I up played there. it. I think I played it three or four times on the show. Um, there's I, I tend to uh, shy away from uh, playing the same song on multiple episodes unless it's the end of your countdown or. If if somebody dies and that's like, mm. oh man, that version is the definitive version of their biggest hit. That's the one I'm going to play, even though I've played it on the show a bunch of times. But sure. if it's like a regular weekly, hey, their 50th birthday, let's play a bunch of blah, 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 then um, I'll always try and find new songs uh, that I have not played on the show. Faulkner's healthy. He's good, right? He's good. He's doing all right. No, no worries okay. for Faulkner. Okay. He's young. Yeah. He's young. I don't even know young-ish. if he's, he uh, switched to doing producing. He he had a band called TV Eyes for a while. And uh, then he started doing producing. And I don't know who he's produced music for. I need to go, go back and follow him because he was part of Beck's uh, touring group for a while. Oh, why does that fit was, so well? That seems just about right. It fits to me. perfectly, right? Yeah. I mean, he is the, yeah. That's great. Um, and Beck's still doing yeah. shit, right? He does things. Beck's still totally doing shit. Yeah. yeah. Making the albums, going on the tours. <laughs> he's doing all that stuff he's yeah. got the the two turntables and a microphone going both both of those things all three of those things yes devil's haircut all that mm-hmm. well great uh fantastic news everybody <laughs> how to speak spanish that's right who else is gonna do it if he's not uh we're gonna play a call here we got oh cool all right. yeah we asked people to respond to the idea of cops playing their switch on duty Mm, good. And okay. what that's, you know, if that was a common thing, we talked about the Japanese cop who got uh, suspended for a while and all that for, mm-hmm. and no pay and all that, or a reduction in pay. And we got somebody right in about it. Uh, so let's play that call. Here you go. Hey, Scott and Brian, this call is for TMS. We're just calling in to let you know that uh, this is in response to that story about the, I think it was the Japanese police officer who got in trouble for playing Switch while on duty. Well, happens in America here, too. I know me and my coworkers, I'm not a police officer, but I work in a 911 center, and uh, usually on holidays, and when we're not busy, I mean, we, you know, we organize the work around it, but we might bust out the switch for a little Mario party on the uh, on those long holiday shifts. I haven't gotten in trouble, at least not yet, so hopefully that doesn't come down the pipeline. Great show, guys. Thank you. Am I the only one that's surprised to hear that holiday 911 traffic is lower? I guess if it's Christmas, would... people are at home, I guess? I guess, but I mean, I feel like... Uh, Fourth of July got to be higher than an average day. Yeah, New Year's Eve. No way. July. There's no way New Year's Eve is quiet at a nine one one. Right. Yeah. Exactly. All that drinking. So yeah, you're probably right. Like Christmas is probably dull and boring. And like, oh, we had a, a, a Christmas tree fell on Grandpa. Can you send someone over to help <laughs> us uh, pull it off of him? It's really heavy. <laughs> Uncle Lewis tried to light his cigarette or light his uh, cigar. <laughs> After the blessing. Uh, <laughs> So you got like uh, Easter's yeah. probably quiet, Thanksgiving's quiet. Right. Um, so that makes sense, I guess. It would suck yeah. to get the right. Christmas shift at a nine one one call center. I would hate that. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that these guys are breaking them out mm-hmm. uh, and not getting in trouble yet, well, whatever. I think that's great. And also Mario Party, you know what's a pretty good time killer. It's all right. It's not bad. Yeah. yeah. Did you say Mario Party or Mario Kart? That's, Party, I thought. Uh, party okay yeah i like I, I'm, I love the party i love the mario party i like it too it's like a it's literally a board game in your hand you know yeah yeah and that switch game got some heat because it's um there's some real randomization in it a lot of rng in that game mm-hmm. but i really like it we played it not long ago with some people over here and we had a great time wait so yeah. it got heat for being too random yeah like so i guess in years past it wasn't so luck based um, and I don't know how much of that is, you know, 
true of older versions of the game. Oh, the only... I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like too much RNG in the games that, that would require, the, the little mini games that would require skill. Yeah, because in, out on the gotcha. board, of course that's random because you're rolling dice. Yeah, you want your right? dice rolls to be random. That's why I was like, wait, uh, too, too random? Yeah. So there's <laughs> but a no, little, that does make sense. There's a little bit of that going on. But I do like that yeah. series more than I think most people do. Some people scoff yeah. at it when there's new ones, but I think they're it good just, time. It initially felt very... Uh, uh, rudimentary. What's the, it felt targeted towards a much younger audience than I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, it looked like it was, but it really wasn't. It, mm. it, you know, I think it's fun. It just is, you know, it's got kitty kind of music, but that just means it's fun for all ages. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Look, the uh, Nintendo, they make games and people like them. Get over yourselves. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's um, uh, talk about your mystery date. Well, how'd it go this weekend? Yeah. Oh, it was uh, awesome. Tina and I went out. Uh, it was her turn to pick for me. So we went out to dinner, and then uh, uh, we drove over to the place where the mystery date was going to happen. I saw this big sign that said Cirque Paranormal. So it's like a Cirque du Soleil thing, but much more death metal-y mm. <laughs> looking and uh because of our 100 mile an hour winds that we've had over the weekend uh sorry kids uh circus has been canceled miss outside should have told you mm. really so yeah so it was a bummer they actually low like the the tent that they had pulled up they it was flattened or they lowered it to uh you know you don't want the whole tent shaking with the lines and the, the wires that come down from that thing that people are using to uh, juggle fire while they tightrope walk. Yeah. Um, kind of thing. And that but, sucks. Uh, we're doing it's um, they gave us rain check tickets. So we're going tonight at oh, 730. All so right. um, it's not should bad. Be, should be pretty cool. Cirque. I'm pull, pulling up right now. Cirque paranormal. So literally an outdoor deal. Uh, well, a tented outdoor deal, though. A tented outdoor deal, yes. Okay, that makes it more authentic, I'll bet. You know? Yeah, yeah. More than I, some... Yeah, I think so. Like, it feels more like a traveling... Um, I used to call them geek shows, I mm -hmm. guess. Mm -hmm. Ooh, restricted. Under 17 requires accompanying parent or adult guardian over 21. No one under 13 admitted. Uh-oh. What's up there, man? This is not your children's paranormal circus. So it's, I assume it's a lot of like, uh, I don't know, avant-garde looking stuff. Yeah, you got video? Let's see. We got a trailer of some sort. I, I haven't even looked at this video myself. I'm wondering if I should because I don't want to spoil any surprises for me. Cause yeah, you're about to see it. I'm about to see it. Let's see what we got here, chat. We'll just take a look here on the screen. Yeah. Oh, we got a we got a plague doctor looking guy. We got yeah. some, uh, oh, is an axe? Oh, violence there oh this is like stuff. very horror based interesting yeah yeah all right i'm super curious about your take tomorrow <laughs> should be interesting because this is wild dude yeah it looks uh it looks like if rob zombie had a circus yeah um yeah let's see when is it does it go through utah the utah the utah does it come through um, the utah it does not so uh That's casper wyoming Billings, Edmonton, Alberta, Eureka, California, Medford, Oregon, a lot of your Oregon uh, shows, Eugene, Redmond, Happy Valley, Puyallup, Washington, Tacoma, Washington, uh, and then the East Coast, Freehold, New Jersey, Elizabeth, New Jersey. Yeah, so it's it's interesting, these, these weird, almost vertical swaths that it takes, right? Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, Alberta. Yeah. Uh, California, Oregon, Washington, New yeah. Jersey. <laughs> That'd be cool if they uh, can, would come here. Only tour on uh, north, north, south uh, <laughs> freeways. It's weird. It's all longitude, and that's it. Oh wait, that's right. Latitude, yeah, longitude. Latitudes this longitude. way. Yeah, latitudes. Uh, I, I always think ladder and like Horizontal. rungs of a ladder. Yeah. yeah oh, there you go. That's a yeah. good way to remember it. Yeah. yeah. When I was a kid, that was how you did it, so the teacher didn't make fun of you in class exactly yeah. very nice so, well have fun yeah. and uh report tomorrow and we'll tell see you how it went. tell you all about it tomorrow i wonder if they'll let me um uh take pictures in there and if so i'll take some pictures uh it's the in this video there's a couple people taking shots so you probably be okay. okay cool so it's probably be okay seems like it plus you know they, they're showing a lot on camera here there's some contortionist shit there Holy. is some yeah some wacky wacky contors contortionist shit yeah that's ed what, ed <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> All right, here's this. Uh, that, 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 that.
da. I noticed another one. He took my color, the bastard. I know. You didn't even get yellow. You got pink. Yeah, I grabbed the pink. I'm going pink, baby. Uh, hey, Dunaway, what are you doing? Welcome. How are Wait, you? I always, oh, hi, Scott and Brian. I always uh-huh. take purple. Do you always take, what do I usually take? I don't know usually why I get, had purple. Usually get gold or yellow. Yeah, don't yeah. you? Yeah. I had, I think it's because I, I don't know, last time maybe. Travis took the one that I usually take or something. Oh, maybe. Travis. I don't know. Uh, but hey, it's look, it's the half asses. We're going to play a game. Don't always here to play it with us. Brian Nibbett will explain what the hell this thing is. Brian, take it away. Here are your explanations. Welcome to the morning half asses, a trivia game where I'm actually going to be giving you the answers. I'll give Scott and Brian a category and six possible answers, three of which are correct, and three of them, like the prophecy of the eclipse, are incorrect. Depending on how confident they feel with the category, they can provide one, two, or three guesses. But if you get any of those guesses wrong, you get zero points for that round. Mm-hmm. Get one right, gets you a point. Two right gets you three points. Three right gets you five points. We'll add up all those points to the player with the most after three rounds. Wins the prize for their contestant. And who are our contestants and what are our prizes? I'll tell you right now. Scott, you're going to be playing for Jeff Rose in Columbus, Ohio. Nice. Ooh. I think he's in a he's in a in the path of totality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Brian, you're going to be playing for Kev, aka Crazy, in Richfield, Utah. Oh, nice. Crazy I've been to Richfield. Kev. Richfield's cool. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, it's a little more rural, but it's cool. I like that town. Uh, hey, Dunaway, uh, uh, you're down in the south there. A lot of people come into the south to see eclipses in certain parts of the country there. Are you excited about Stay looking out of up? my town. Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> What's your percentage? Because you're not in the totality, right, where you're at? I am not in the totality. The last time it came through, we did get the totality. This time, we're only getting 78.7% in around <laughs> three hours and 39 minutes. Mm. That's so precise. Precise. Very precise. I, I may have the app pulled up and may be watching it all day. I don't know. Maybe. Well, maybe. Saying, uh, you're just saying yeah. maybe. That's all. Maybe. Uh, it was really cool the last time, though, with the totality thing, standing outside, and it just got it got dark. and kind That was the one last year, chill. right? Yeah, yeah. A little bit yeah. of chill in the air. And it's like, ooh, scary. Skitty. I see why people freaked out back in the day. Definitely yeah. be creepy. Yeah. If you didn't know what's coming, oh, they're still. Outside, there's, there's what your around. dogs do. Keep keep an yeah. eye on what your dogs do when uh, the the eclipse is going on because oh, they'll oh, they freak oh, out. Oh. Yeah, there's still people. There's uh, you didn't the, we your have dog? we have some sitting Congress people who think it's a sign of uh, God's wrath. So um, oh. you know, Just end their end their terms right now. Good I mean, Lord. come on, what so more stupid. do we need? So stupid. <laughs> This is a sign sent from God. It's like, yeah, he's been sending it since the beginning of time every yeah. 20 years. And, is that, and you know what? I like to if call, I'm wrong, it, if I'm wrong, I'll totally eat my hat. Yeah, I have no problem. I like to call the moon occasionally God's hand. Ooh, yeah. Look at me. Ooh, I'm up here. Look. Ooh. The people that claim rapture, I kind of hope they get taken. It's fine. Rapture. Just go ahead and fly off. That's great. We'll do fine without you. Anyway. Uh, let's play this game. I'm very excited. <laughs> Won't you tell us how you feel, Scott? <laughs> yeah, let's let's get to the game. All right, let's start with your first one. Uh, we talked about holidays earlier on the show and their relation to EMTs and emergency workers and stuff like that. But which of which of these holidays have a Peanuts TV special? Uh, you know, so it's blank Charlie Brown or, or something equivalent. Uh, your choices are Earth Day, Columbus Day, Super Bowl Sunday, Flag Day, Arbor Day, and Easter. Which of those have a an associated Peanuts TV special? Oh, my Lord, Boink. dude. Uh, boy, one of these seems... Oh, shit. Uh, I think I'm doing... I think I'm doing... Mm. Some of these are trying to trick me. I'm doing Some two. Some of these I'm are, doing two. are trying to trick me. I'm, pick, I'm picking two pinkers. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. Arbor Day is correct. Yeah, it's Arbor Day, Charlie Brown, or or you're a you're a good Arbor Day, Charlie Brown. I don't know what's mm-hmm. called. Uh, Easter is also correct. Mm-hmm. Columbus Day is not. Mm-hmm. You guys both no. centered on Columbus Day. There's no, it's it's Columbus Day, Charlie Brown. But Super Bowl Sunday, oddly, is the other one. So oh, damn interesting. It. Between the two of you, you picked uh, the three correct ones. I've been, you also picked the wrong one. Damn it. I've been listening to another podcast uh, called Stuff You Should Know. I think that's what it's called. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, they've been talking about the peanuts. And I've also broke out my old 1950s through 54 uh, Peanuts collection. I've been reading that in bed every night instead of looking at TikTok and staying up all night and 
I'm looking at Charlie Brown and saying, good night, Charlie Brown. Mm -hmm. Going to bed. <laughs> yep. <laughs> good night, Charlie Brown's my favorite Charlie Brown special. It's, uh, that's mm -hmm. one of the better ones, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's see if you uh, do a little bit better with question number Not two the here. original characters. Little little folks was no. different in the first yeah, one. Yeah, they had different. It's like, uh, yeah. Charlie Brown didn't even have his stripy shirt on. The no, and was he had walking on more... all fours. Mm. Uh, there were characters you didn't recognize. It's like, who are these people? Sure. They're all, it's like those early Simpsons where they're just drawn different and you're like, who yeah. are these? Yeah. Uh, freaks. Those are yeah. weird. Those are hard to look at sometimes. They are. I yeah. love them. I love them. I know you do. You love everything. But that, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I mean, I love them too for what they are. I just, they're so discordant. It just feels off. Yeah. It's like that it's first. It's so much fun to you're watch. So used to, you're so used to the way things are drawn, the way you know them. And so yeah. when you see these alternate versions, it's like, what is was this an AI version of Peanuts or an AI version of The Simpsons? What am I looking at? Here? Yeah, Which it's not, very as weird. As a cartoonist, is so much fun seeing where Shell started at and kind of like what. what oh, he I was agree. Thinking, I totally work. agree. It's like anything. If you watch, uh, do yourselves a favor and watch the Family Guy pilot sometime. It is mm. oh, weird yeah. as shit. It is, it is so is, weird. Yeah. Voices aren't worked out. Nobody talks right, looks right, acts right. Like that is the hallmark Lacey of animation. Chabert, I think was. Uh, uh, was the voice of um, what's her face, the daughter? Oh, I didn't um, even know that. That's even weirder. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And there was a, like an original. Uh, the the original SpongeBob episode is super weird. Like they're all like this, mm -hmm. all weird. The first Friends like episode. It's not even animated. That first Friends episode. That pilot oh, yeah, is a yeah. nightmare. It is so <laughs> different than the rest of the show. So anyway. Yeah. How how uh, Snoopy like in half of the first uh, uh, comics is he's just walking around with a flower on his head half the time. He's constantly getting flowers and somebody yeah. watering him. Like really? I don't know where you're going with this, but I like it. And he was Let's on dig it. And he was on four legs for most of that run. Oh, and, and then and suddenly Brown two had legs. Like this catchphrase in nineteen, I think it was in in March of fifty or something like that. Anyway, he was like, I I, I get my laughs. Every time he would do something, he would do something asinine, and he would say, I get my laughs, and he'd run off. It was great. <laughs> really? I love oh it. Oh, my God. Good grief is so much better. Good grief. Good grief. Well, yeah, it is. And getting that football taken away, uh, classic. 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 All right. Let's get to uh, question number two. Uh, you've had up on screen, so you've probably had time to Google these. Prophets of the <laughs> Old Testament. Which of these are prophets of the Old Testament? You've got Nahum. De I'm sure I pronounced that wrong. Deborah, John, Osmo, Joel, Deborah. and Hezekia. Joel Osmond, you say? Yeah, Joel Osmond. I think that's Haley Joel okay. Osmo. I'm going to guess that's Hezekiah. <laughs> probably Hezekiah, right? Hezekiah. Yeah, that's probably Hezekiah. Um, I'm going to shame myself by by not. I don't like the Old Testament. Well, it's got, can you do the New Testament? It's got some I gnarly prefer, shit in there. I prefer my testaments new. <laughs> <laughs> prophets, prophets. I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick things that sound old. How about okay. that? There all we right. go. Yeah, Deborah, Joel, and John all sound like new po new folks. And I'm probably <laughs> totally wrong, but that's okay. Uh, all right. Well, you guys both settled on Hezekiah. Let's just get this out of the way right now. No, Hezekiah is uh, is uh, the, a Judean king. John is New Testament, but Deborah and Joel and Nahum, Nahum. Hmm. I'm uh, I'm I'm really glad Osmo is not in there. Yeah, Osmo is uh, Osmo is not. It doesn't even tell me what Osmo is. Usually, it tells me like, oh, these Osmo three are the, the Great. But, yeah. All right. <laughs> has uh, you know has a, Osmo the Great of the Old Testament? No, he sounds oh, like he you sounds deserve like, to be smited today. He sounds like a one of those like a Orco style sidekick cartoon <laughs> character. Does. Right, Osmo is like a little little hat floating hat with the eyes underneath it. Yeah, some little <laughs> shithead you just wish wasn't in the cartoon. There you go. Anyway, well, I'll tell you, peanuts, the Old Testament. Boy, you're going biblical today. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, and and now I'm going to go to the uh, the Alps, the Swiss Alps for this Ooh, one. Ooh, like just like we uh, watched this week, past weekend on the film stack. Okay. Oh yes. Well, maybe mm -hmm. there was a woman singing in the background about her favorite things. That's what I want you to do is tell oh. me which of these are uh, some of uh, Maria's favorite, favorite, things favorite things in the Sound of Music. Uh, okay. Snowflakes, apple strudel, stockings, poodles, doorbells, and rainbows. Mm -hmm. Which three of these are things you will find mm -hmm. in the lyrics to My Favorite Things? Shut up, I'm singing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it can't be doorbells, can it? 
<laughs> Narnia, 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 Narnia. Oh. Picking two again. I will caution the chat room on not <clears throat> putting full lyrics of the song into the chat, maybe. Yeah, jerks. <laughs> jerks. Oh, geez. All these sound right and wrong at the same time. Something apple strudel. I'm not going with that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Feels too obvious. Right. So friend, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Apple strudel is good. No, that's not. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, once again, uh, you guys both settled on stockings. Stockings is not uh, oh, <laughs> one of her favorite kidding things. Me? No, she but hates snowflakes. the stockings, right? She's like, I hate an apple strudel is it. I like apple strudel. That doesn't sound Door right. Doorbells <laughs> is in there? Doorbells, yeah. Doorbells yeah. and sleigh bells and schnitzel oh. and noodles. And something and schnitzels and, and poodles and, and rainbows. Yeah. It's, my, it's my mom's no favorite rainbows. movie of all time, and I don't I don't know enough oh. about it, I guess. Yeah. I know. She'd, well, be, she'd be very disappointed in me if I told her my I haven't results, given so. a score update, folks, because there's no score, so we're going to have to go right to our tiebreaker here with this one. And uh, oh god, uh, let's see. Uh, do you remember who won last? Oh, I guess it was Scott and TV's Travis. Scott, you won last week, right? I did. Cool. So I'm gonna let you. Uh, I'll let you pick whether you want to give the answer or do the over under. Oh, um, let's do over under. That makes it more okay. interesting, I think, as a final. All right. Oh, does it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> You'll have to live with it. All right. So, uh, uh, Brian, you're gonna give your answer to this. Scott's gonna tell us over under. How many wooden blocks come in the game Jenga? Oh, nice. I so just saw it. Your, your box of Jenga, you open it yeah. up. And, yeah. I was uh, I was at a store yesterday and I had a a, a special box. It was a, I was at a Walgreens. All right. It was it was a special edition Jenga. And so I'm not sure if it's going to mm. I'm going to say I don't know if that the has number more or less, yeah, special edition. I I want to say the number is uh uh, uh uh 42. 42 is incorrect. Scott, is the actual answer higher or lower? The number of blocks in a box of Jenga. I mean, it's been how a many, long how time. How many blockheads in a in a in, in a, a morning Jenga. show three, game? Just one. three on this show right blockhead. here. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say that's, that's another I think, peanuts thing. That's what, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. all the time. Yeah. Good job. I'm, I'm going to say that. it's, um, it's, that doesn't feel, that feels like too many. I'm going to say it's less. Okay. You're an idiot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Right. Said 42. Scott said less. The actual answer is 54. There are 54 yeah, damn it. blocks in a Jenga box. So Brian, you get the, uh, yeah, baby. Win. Nicely done, dude. You deserve that it. That means uh, Kev, aka Crazy Knowers in Richfield, Utah, is going to get these prizes. Uh, Kev, you won Wolfenstein, The Old Blood, Ooh, and Super Cat Boy. Mm. Both on Steam. Nice. Never played Super Cat Boy. Yeah. Big thanks, by the way, what? to King Quizamabi for sending these in. Yeah. Is that oh, like Super he's Meat great. Boy, but with a cat? I don't know. You'd yeah, have to win to find out, I suppose. Yeah. I have zero idea. But it, uh, the, uh, Quizanabi, the, our, our newest uh, giver of codes, super nice dude. Uh, shout out to him for for being so uh, generous. As all yes. of our people who very give us generous. codes, but he's Absolutely, been yes. very nice. Yeah, if you I get your humble bundles and you don't care about a couple of the games, send them our way. We'll give them away. Yeah, it's easy. It's a piece of cake. And if you're like, wait, should I send it to Brian or Scott? doesn't matter. Send it to either one doesn't of us. doesn't matter. You yeah. want to send them on Discord? Great. You want to email them? Great. It doesn't matter. You want to yep. put them on your gravestone and make us go to your funeral and read it off the stone and then put them in the spreadsheet? That's fine, I'm too. Probably not, we're probably I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Oh, but, uh, oh all right. I've gone too far. Yeah. Well, sorry, sorry. all those other previous things, though, those work, and please do. Give us more. Yep. Uh, uh, very cool. Oh, did I say what the other person won? No. Uh, no. So the other person, uh, Jeff Rose, you're getting a copy of Song of Horror Complete Edition. Mm -hmm. Also courtesy. That of, sounds uh, cool. Quizamabi. Be funny if that, that was. That uh, that'd be funny if that was Tech TV's Kevin Rose. Or no, what'd you say his first name was? His first name was uh, Jeff. Oh, never mind. Was Nothing Kevin. like yeah. Kevin Rose. Nothing <laughs> even close. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close to that name. Nothing like him. No. Uh, Dunaway. Well done, Dunaway. I feel pretty good about your win today, even though I lost. I can't. Oh, I can't we, do anything but support you for your win. You know what I mean? We struggled today. It was. It was a toss up, literally. Yep. We had to toss a number up, and yeah. you had us. It yeah. was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Also, that's a lot of Jenga pieces, guys. That is a lot of Jenga it pieces. It really 54. is. And don't drop the, them. Uh, yeah. The record, by the way, for the highest tower created is forty levels. So oh my. 
40 uh, Jengas high. And sta just standard Jenga high. pieces, right? Not the big the thick standard, ones. Or... Yeah, not the big uh, ones you find at, at uh, Millennial Bars. <laughs> That's really impressive. That's yeah, huge. Yeah. That'd be a fun one to try to break that, right? That record. It just, would be great. Yeah. yeah. What great, oh, of all of the records in the record books, if the three of us were like plopped on an island with all the resources we needed, mm -hmm. and they said, you guys have to break a, a big record in the Guinness Book of World Records, what, what would you guys want to try to break? <laughs> stuck on this island, but here, break this record, and we'll let you right. off the island, basically. Yeah, that's the only way we get off. You got to break it, whatever it is. And you, can, and you have the wherewithal to break any of them. Like right. even we could even uh, fatten Dunaway up to be the fattest man if we wanted or whatever. It doesn't okay. matter. I, I I would I would prefer to not do that. But yeah, um, largest prime rib steak consumed oh, by a okay. man on an island. Got it. It's funny Let's you guys it. are going with things that you would consume, and I was thinking like world's largest poop. So hmm. <laughs> maybe, maybe we could do both. Though, make the two. The yeah, yeah, combine the two together, and maybe we could do that. Yeah, let's double yeah. up. I like it. Yeah. What do you got, Scott? What's what's your uh, what? what uh, I'm always what impressed. I'm always impressed with things like things that seem stupid to make giant, like um, oh sure, world's giant or the biggest butter or uh, peanut butter, or just quesadilla. Or something. Yeah, or quesadilla yeah. or whatever. Those things fascinate me because the, at scale, they you have to make them so differently. You can't do it like you would in your kitchen. It has to be right, right. Create you, you know, bring to, dump you trucks have to of cheese. Build and, an oven. Yeah. To put the thing in that you're going to be baking. Yeah. yeah, so that kind of stuff is interesting to me. So I would I would go for that. So let's just say the world's largest butter or uh, peanut butter cup, so that Dunaway has to say uh, Reese's the whole time we're there. <laughs> I'll just call it a peanut butter cup. Solved. Okay. Fair. Uh, uh, Ripley's, believe it or not, uh, Charles Schultz. He uh, he he was the youngest person to to illustrate one of those. Oh really? Yeah. Wait, illustrate, to illustrate the one of what's oh like the Ripley's Guinness believe World it or not Record. oh the book the the, the the books the Ripley's, Ripley's believe it or not, not books. books yeah oh, yeah really? I always forget they had books before they had a show I always thought it was just a show and it was always they had comic uh, strips one hand push oh, yeah, Guinness Book of World's Records or Ripley's uh, well no they who, both they the, both the, freaked the me out peanut stuff the, yeah. the fact oh, that the peanut peanuts started stuff. out before those cartoons it was comic strips who who did uh who who was the one hand push up guy um. Uh, City Slickers, yeah, uh, uh, Palance, Jack, Jack Palance. Palance. He's didn't he host it? Believe it or not, yes, that he him? Totally did. did. I used to love those. Yeah. Dean Cain did for a while too, didn't he? I think yeah, he so. Did. Yeah. Is that he did. right? The more modern version of it. Yeah, I think yep. so. Yeah, you wouldn't believe or not where he is now. Anyway, uh, <laughs> there you have it. That's the fun we had today with a little game there and done away. Boy, without you, it wouldn't have been fun at all. So thanks for being yeah. here, man. Yeah. Uh, anything you want to say before I? unceremoniously kick your ass why are you gonna kick <laughs> <laughs> well you don't get to answer a <laughs> question good. with a question you know nicely done yeah yeah it was, it was a very uh mid-sentence i love it yeah well done. get out of here all right let's do this right here folks it's time for where is it this it's time for the news brought to you by man saves woman from drowning woman doesn't return favor all right Guess the movie, Brian. My guess is Titanic. You are correct. Right? That, it uh, is Titanic. But nice uh, she does save him by going and getting a gun to shoot the um, the handcuffs that he's uh, like. Because if he doesn't get those handcuffs off, he's handcuffed to the bad guy's office and the water's filling up. That's true. And that is saving him technically from drowning, isn't it? Right. Because he, he's not going to die from being handcuffed. He's going to die from drowning because he can't get in the air. I think but, that's a uh, good point. This is a bad one. Yeah. Because yeah. it should be man saves woman from drowning after she saved him one time from drowning, but doesn't return it a second <laughs> doesn't, time. Doesn't save him the second, the most important time from drowning. Yeah. Yes. Uh, when Magus wants to know, Sorry, what is Jack, that? This door just isn't big enough. <laughs> oh, that's it, right. It was an axe. That's right. Um, which one was the Jonathan Frakes one? Asked Win Magus. Whether well, he asked questions. Have you ever yeah, been in a car the, with a blah, blah, blah. Um, What was that called? Was that? Um, Have you ever been in a? Chicken? Was that? Believe it or not, it was a. No, it was something else like a. Like Freaks. in search of or exposed or something like that. But, oh, beyond belief, fact or fiction. That's it. Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. His the compilation. Have you ever of... wondered why the sun is hot? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, love... I love that super cut of all of his questions. I think this to is a, a huge parking area, and realized you'd forgotten where you parked your car. Ever gone mountain biking? What do you want to be when you grow up? What's the right tip? Have you called a plumber to your home lately? <laughs> How superstitious are you? How much money would it take to make you spend a night in a cemetery? Do you display this as a trophy? Do you have a pet? Do you have a... <laughs> <laughs> it's 
sounds like it sounds like one of those dates from Love on the Spectrum. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> kind of does. Oh my but gosh, that conversation. That yeah. season three kid. Um, is it the one who asks, uh, "Do you like the zoo? Do you yeah, like this kind he's, of? Do you that like this kid's kind of amazing because he, he can't. He's, he didn't know how else to do it. So, and she's this no. you know very quiet, subdued little girl, uh-huh. and he's yeah. He's like, do you like the zoo? Yeah. Do you like, uh, what's your favorite animal? Monkeys? Mine's a, mine's a monkey. What's yours? Oh, I love that. Okay, what do you think it is? Like, they just go yeah. and go and go, that kid. He's great. Tina yeah. had to, I haven't, that's the only part of the show I've seen because Tina's like, Brian, you have to come watch this. I was doing something else. She's like, come watch this right now. And I just watched that segment. It's like, oh, that's so sweet because it's like. He doesn't know what else to do. Just, didn't know what else to do. Yeah. Like, this is how you make conversation. It's so good. All true. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's get to our first story. China has a big problem. They got a big problem with gonorrhea, Brian. Big gonorrhea Oh, problem. no. Yep. Oh, no. Chinaria. Uh, I don't practice gonorrhea. Anyway, the study finds <laughs> that uh, gonorrhea is a huge issue in China, and uh, they're going to have to deal with this sooner or later. Health officials have long warned that gonorrhea is becoming more and more resistant to all the antibiotic drugs that we have to fight it. Last year, the U.S. reached a grim landmark. For the first time ever, two unrelated people in Massachusetts were found to have gonorrhea infections with complete or reduced susceptibility to every drug in the arsenal to fight it, including the frontline drug Ceftriaxone. Ceftriaxone. Uh Sure, sure. Maybe. Uh, Maybe. Luckily, they were still able to be cured with a high dose of injections of the stuff, but the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention bluntly notes, I don't know if this is that blunt, but anyway, quote, little now stands between us and the untreatable gonorrhea, unquote. That's scary as hell. Sure can be if you got the gonorrhea. Well, no, I mean, if you've got the untreatable gonorrhea, right? Like, mm-hmm. the fact that we've had we've had gonorrhea that you could just treat with a, what is it, like a, a shot of something. Well, I guess it's a shot of this Cetra, Ceftriaxone or whatever it is. Yeah, the point but, is it's uh, just becoming resistant to it. So if you've it's had... It's becoming resistant, yeah. So, geez. I don't know if that's one of these resistances where if you have gonorrhea for the first time, you're fine. You know how, like, if people do a lot of antibiotics, they oh, it, uh, become... they develop a tolerance to it, or it, uh, the, their their strain develops a tolerance to it. I right. Guess. However, that works. Um, oh, I have a medical question. Oh my gosh! Okay, that wow. I meant to put in the notes, completely forgot about it. I'm glad this came up. I got to ask this question. So, may the ears of Doctor Jerry Tolbert burn right now as I <laughs> evoke his we'll name. We'll get our answer in a chat that's marked by a purple circle. That's right. Time now. That's right. Here's what I want to know, Jerry. Um, and you can call this one in as an answer if you want. You however, you respond however you want. But I was told this weekend by somebody, I will not name who, but they told me that the reason babies' heads smell so good, because there's a real sweet, like, babies smell great. When they're not shitting their pants, they smell great. There's sure, something yeah. about them. Uh, and right now we got a couple of infants in my life. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. holding them, I can just nuzzle them and go, oh, you smell so good. And then somebody said, you know why that is? And again, I'm not going to say who it was. Mm-hmm. And they said, because brain surgeons have shown, this sounded like bullshit the minute it started coming out of their mouth. Mm-hmm. Brain yeah. surgeons have shown that the reason they smell good is because they're thin skin and they don't have the fully formed uh, skull bones and stuff, plates. They're not, for, you know, right. you have the weird right. little yeah, triangle of death. spot that you can't touch and stuff, yeah. He says what you're smelling is the actual brain smells like that and it's coming up through the head. And that's how you're, <laughs> what you're smelling is their brain. <laughs> and I don't believe okay. it. And they were dead serious telling me this. They were like, oh yeah, yeah no, you're smelling their brain. They just have, it's a sweet smelling <laughs> organ. <laughs> I don't think. All right, I'm I'm hoping that somebody proves this right because I feel like this is total BS. Like they smell good because you put baby powder on them and baby shampoo and and you know you're keeping them clean and they're not sweaty and gross and uh, yeah. And little babies don't have the hormonal reactions that like say a teenager has where everything right. stinks. They they just don't right, have that exactly. yet. It's like yeah. Van. Van can be as dirty and as sweaty and as dirty kid as you can make him. But he doesn't. He doesn't get reeky armpits when he's five. Yeah. It's yeah, just no. they're different. So I think that that's what it is. I think it's complete BS. I didn't believe it yeah. the second I heard it. <laughs> so somebody somewhere, just fill us in. I know there's a there's a flood of links. I'm not going to go read them all. Sure, I want sure. Jerry Tolbert, who went to medical school and graduated, yeah. to tell me up or down how how much BS is this. 
do brains smell good? Because I really like wanted to know. Because <laughs> they do. Like Ramona was here last night, and she just I just want to just sniff her head until they leave. She has a she just smells so good. She's so oh, cuddly. God, now I now I totally want to know who told you this, by the way. But I know you don't want to name. I don't want to name names name trouble because someone I know listens, and they'll they they told me and. And they really, and I went, no. And they're like, I promise it's true. I'm like, well, show me it's true. Well, I'll send you some stuff, which I've not gotten yet, by the way. Yeah. Do your own <laughs> research. Uh, anyway, so this gonorrhea deal. Uh, yeah. It's really bad in China. It smells, it smells really bad, by the way, the gonorrhea deal. Yeah, yeah I don't, a, nobody wants super... gonorrhea. Uh, I wouldn't go, want gonorrhea based on the name alone, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't even know what it does. I haven't looked that deep. But mm -hmm. uh, I know it's an STI. Or D, STD. It's a D. Mm -hmm. STI would be a surgically... Yeah, and I can't remember which is the one. I know herpes is, is, you basically just have it. You just treat the symptoms. Syphilis and gonorrhea are treatable, right, with shots? Right. Yeah, they're both bacterial, uh, aren't they? Or maybe they're viral. I don't know nothing about this yeah. world. Never had an STI in my life. Yeah. Or an STD. I thought it was sexually transmitted disease, STD. That's what I but, thought. Uh, STI yeah. is what? Nothing? STI. Sexually transmitted Ireland, because that's where it's coming from. Uh, uh, I wonder what the IO infection, sexually transmitted infection. Oh, so. you know what? Maybe yeah. that's maybe yeah. that is sets it apart from disease, which is more maybe. untreatable. Oh, Doctor Calhoun says they changed it to STI for some reason. Okay, but it's so we don't do disease any. We don't call it a disease anymore. So my brain saying STI was actually correct. Weird. Yes. Once in a while, it gets it right. I don't know how. Yeah, broken clock is right twice a day. Yeah. I guess so. If I say STI enough, I'm going to get it. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the International Space Station. Uh, some crap fell off of it and hit a house on in Florida. Oh, no. Oh, they, no. Say, they say May, but uh, I don't know. They're still trying to figure out whether it happened or whether it's from the space station specifically. But move over, Boeing. Like it'd be pretty, well, I guess it'd be pretty burnt up from going through the atmosphere and stuff. So I think most of the time that stuff dissipates in the atmosphere, right? Something mm -hmm. falls out of there. But once in a while, something will get through, just like meteors and stuff. And it says here a few weeks ago, something from the heavens came crashing through the roof of Alejandro Orteo's home, and NASA is on the case. In all mm -hmm. likelihood, they've had to pause it for all this eclipse stuff, though. They're busy. Right. <laughs> That's right, NASA. NASA is temporarily pausing the case because we need to focus a uh, a camera at the eclipse, and then we'll be back to your case. That's right. Sixty five minutes, by the way. The current video uh, says on NASA's website till we get to see the eclipse on video. Anyway, yeah, is it still okay? Yeah, how does it say how many more minutes till uh, their broadcast? Sixty five, sixty five, sixty four okay. now. All right, yeah. a little over an hour. Uh, a few weeks ago, oh, I already mentioned that. In all likelihood, this is a near two-pound object that came from the International Space Station. Uh, this guy says it tore through the roof and both floors of his two-story house in Naples, wow. Florida. Yeah. So right, like basically, just like that comic strip of mm -hmm. right, you know, just yeah. as you imagine. Jeez. Yeah, and they always say, "What?" what uh, someone confirmed this. Who, who was it? Um, oh, shit, I can't remember who I was listening to. Some some astrologist guy astronomer guy not astrologist he said that if you could fire a speck of sand yeah from far enough away at the right velocity when it hit the earth it would have the power of some number of atomic bombs just oh, that wow. just that speck wow. of dust because really? of just the just one grain of sand yeah if you could get um, it through the atmosphere and all that but so bobby is saying uh this is what he was planning on talking about for uh, his segment today so should we oh should we, we can hold off next story and we'll pick it pick it uh, pick it up when bobby yeah we i had no idea bobby that's fine we can totally do yeah. that totally yeah tell us more about it <clears throat> did boeing make the international space station and nobody told me hmm Mm. We'll have to. We'll have to. Maybe Bobby has some information on that uh, grain of sand thing. Maybe cool he does. Um, all right. Well, where are we now then? Oh, Harvard. Let's talk about Harvard. Let's talk about Harvard. <clears throat> Their school. They have removed uh, the binding of human skin from a book in its library that was famously there for a long time. Yes, this is the one. This is the book that uh, is bound with human skin and. Uh, um, I thought so. We have this trivia question: in which in which school library would you find the this this book that's bound with human skin? And I got it confused with the um, was it the Book of Kells in Trinity College? Mm. And so, but we didn't we never came up with Harvard as an answer, so I didn't take a a, a good answer away and replace it with the uh, 
the bad answer. But yeah, this is a trivia question we got recently. It's the one. Uh, it's the one that Bruce Campbell found in the basement of the of the cabin in the woods. <laughs> That's right. It does. It does have a very Evil Dead Necronomicon uh, kind of thing. Can't help but think of that. Going into it. Yeah. Uh, of the roughly 20 million books in the Harvard University libraries, that's a lot. 20 million books, geez. One has long exerted a unique dark fascination, not for its contents, but for the material which was reputedly bound in human skin. For years, the volume of 19th century French treaties on the human soul was uh, brought out of, uh, sorry, brought out for show and tell, and sometimes, according to library lore, used to haze new employees. Oh, those guys, those hazing wow, people really? over there at the library. Like chasing people around it with the, oh, I'm going to touch you with the skin book. I don't know. <laughs> I hope that's what they did. That's funny. I, yeah. would, I would watch an employee get hazed like that. In 2014, the university drew uh, dr- jokey news uh, coverage around the world with the announcement that it used new technology to confirm that the binding was, in fact, human skin. But on Wednesday, after years of criticism and debate, the university announced it has removed the binding and would be exploring options for a, quote, final respectful disposition of these human remains, unquote. I don't know. Does it, is it that big a deal? So you got, I mean, uh, yeah, you know. All right. Let's say it's your, let's say it's a family member. You know, it's a family member's skin. You're happy if they just totally say, fine. Well, we tossed it in the trash. I don't care. No, well, that's what I'm saying. I'd rather them keep it on the book. Like, oh. Don't take sure. it off the book in the first place is my point. I'm Yeah, I'm wondering what why they felt like they had to do that, right? Does it require a lot of lotion? Put the lotion on the book? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I assume it's like animal skin. It's been treated and, you know, yeah, all that yeah. so that it stays there and does what it's supposed to do. Um, I don't know the history of, like, why it's that way in the first place. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they said it, its own handling of the book, a copy of... Ars, Arsne Houses, however you say his name, Des Destinies de la Aime, for the Destiny of Souls, or the Destiny of Souls it's called, had failed to live up to the ethical standards of care and had some uh, times used as an imp- inappropriate, sensationalistic, morbid, and humorous tone in publicizing it. Well, that gotcha. I get, okay? I get it. But just leave it on and po- put it somewhere in a gl- yeah. under glass or some shit. Like, it's fine. Whoever gave the skin doesn't care. So just do it. I'm sure they don't. They they haven't asked for it back. <laughs> They're not looking for their skin back. <laughs> They're not looking for their skin back. Yeah. They don't have any skin it's a copy, in this game. <laughs> it's a copy of the collected works of Mr. Skin. Perfect. The hardbound <laughs> Mr. Skin biography. Someone's got to keep track of that somehow. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Bob, you'll be here to talk about our second news story. All right. Yeah. Uh, so stick around for that. Strike all that from there. Pretend you didn't hear anything about the dude with the me, the the part of the space space station that fell through his roof and his uh, and his floors. Pretend to strike all that from the record. Yeah. And pretend then, you didn't hear it. I'm instructing the jury to ignore that part of the show. All right. That's all right. Uh, that's gonna do it for that. Let's go to the song break. Brian, bring us a song if you got yeah, one. Yeah. This this is a, a band from Virginia, Richmond, Virginia. And another way you know is because it's right there in the name. It's a band called John Tyler Wiley and his Virginia Choir. Um, This is their first full-length album. It's called Pictures in the Dark. Um, These guys are great. Uh, They um, premiered, they they started touring or uh, recording together in 2020 during the pandemic and um, did it over Zoom to kind of discover their, their, their music working together and their project and stuff. And uh, now they're releasing their first album. It's, uh, like I said, Pictures in the Dark is the album. The song is Flowers. Here's John Tyler Wiley and his Virginia Choir. I didn't leave anything. I'm not missing anything. I know where everything is. We wage war on France on the morrow. And we're back. Who was that again? Yeah, that's a band called John Tyler Wiley and his Virginia Choir from their brand new debut full-length album, Pictures in the Dark. That is the song uh, Flowers. Nice. Go get it. Check it. Check it. Catch it. All right. Bobby's on his way. How do we know? Because this is playing right here. Science! Bob is hungry, and the soup looks good. Bob, uh, his mom called him Bobbert. Welcome to the show. It's nice to have you. How are you? What's going on? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Sorry we almost usurped your topic by accident. No, I, look, 
I'm not here to tell you guys how to run your show. <laughs> yeah. Um, I uh, I would have I would have easily pivoted. Um, you got a backup. A good backup. I, story. I always have something to talk good. about. Right? Mm. So, so that um, I, that... I was mostly saying, "Whoops, I guess maybe I should get back into the habit of letting Scott know <laughs> what I plan to talk about." Yeah, mm. just in case. <laughs> sometimes yeah. it's fun yeah. not knowing, but I but I get the value in it. Um, I had a question though. That speck of dust thing is that uh, provable or a thing that anyone can tell me is true or not? I can't remember who no, said it, it, but somebody. It's, uh, um, yeah, yeah, like uh, like particles, like this, like the size of a grain of sand, can embed themselves into parts of the space, and they often do. That's why they have different shielding and very thick glass and all that kind of stuff. But can so. one come like the the? But the story that if you could launch one at the right speed somewhere out in space, and it hit the Earth and wasn't interrupted by the atmosphere, oh. was like let through. I was gonna say, yeah, the the atmosphere would totally burn up in the atmosphere before it got. To right, the assuming the atmosphere let it yeah. through, though, is it, you know, the power of some bomb or something? Or well, is that... theoretically, theoretically, yeah. I mean, because because to move it, like you've got the mass of the the grain of sand, yeah. But then you also have to factor in the energy. Um, the kinetic energy of it moving so th like um, mm. all of that energy is what would cause a huge impact or explosion or something like that right if right. like you said if if the unrealistic situation where there is like if we remove the atmosphere right mm -hmm. um, it would have to be going really fast yeah uh, so because obviously there are things like the moon or or mercury or pluto that have no atmosphere that get struck by grain of sand size things all the time and they don't they haven't exploded yet yeah um, it had to be like speed of light right or, or yeah and the closer an object gets to the speed of light it's kind of this is not accurate so physicists don't don't at me um but uh i'm <laughs> just this is um a very a very loose shorthand way of saying it but the the closer something gets to the speed of light sort of like the more massive it gets from a certain uh frame of reference hmm. um and so uh it, because of all the energy and and energy and mass are the same sort of thing really when you boil it down and so there's all of that so whatever energy you've put into it to get it to go that speed um that energy is going to be dissipated once it hits something so right but there's a reason why scientists would be concerned about a car-sized uh, meteor coming toward Earth. Because, oh gosh, for sure. Yeah, because, yeah, because even though again, it, energy and mass are right. the same. So if it's if it's it can be moving a lot slower right. than close to the speed of light to have tons of energy if it's very massive. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, that would be enough to tear tear you a new butthole here on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Which explains why something that is just like two inches long would go straight through two stories of a man's house. Right. That's right. No kidding. Yeah. Well, let's 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 talk about. About that so this happened in florida and uh there yeah. was i don't know why all the articles i found i found three others that all say may have hit a house is it is it not certain that this is where it came from is that why they he keep definitely saying hit his house he tweeted yeah. about it um it well may i or think may not be from the space yeah station. that's the may Trust part him, right? yeah the may yeah, part he is included pictures he found it like in his basement or crawl space or something and is yeah. that how big it is it's it's like two inches i know they said it was two pounds how big was this thing it's just a couple of inches um wow. long but but see that goes to what they think that it is they think that it is a piece of um okay so let's back up right yeah um so the the thing that came through this guy's house it happened on march 8th um and uh and he was wondering well what in the world is this um that just came through my house and just went straight through all the stories fortunately nobody was in the house by the way well that's not mm -hmm. true actually his son was in the house but he wasn't home it got the, it made a really loud exploding sound that was picked up on like a ring camera like everything's picked up on nowadays well yeah right. um, yeah and um <laughs> and uh but it was small nobody got hit nobody was hurt thank goodness but um but uh the idea is they're wondering did this come from the space station and and it's very likely and the reason they think it's very likely is because that same day um that same day, the U.S. Space Command detected the re-entry of a piece of space debris over the Gulf of Mexico that was headed for the southwest of Florida. Basically, it was headed for Naples, Florida, where this guy's house is. <laughs> um, and, uh, and the thing that was re-entering re the atmosphere, they've known about for a long time. It was an entire battery pallet that altogether weighed more than two tons. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. 
a so, battery pallet, like a pallet of batteries, <laughs> like like a, like a yeah, yeah. Okay. So this happens. the The International Space Station has batteries that it has to use to run, and they have to be changed out, just like you change out the battery in your smoke detector. Sure. Um, sure. And so, it's does it wake them all harder. up in the middle of the night, going? Ee! Ee! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure I these are so. way bigger than our, you know, standard uh, yeah. D cell. Yeah. Yeah, and um, and so and so so okay, so there's that. I'm going to come back to that in a second. But you said is only a couple inches across, but but. It, you know, you might first think, but it, didn't they say it was nearly two pounds? That's like really heavy for something that's small. But again, think about batteries, even the ones mm -hmm. in your kitchen drawer. Super They're dense. heavy. Yeah. 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 And so the material used to make a battery is metal um, mm -hmm. and other stuff, of course. But um, but batteries are really dense. Mm -hmm. And so the batteries that they use on the space station are even more dense. They're made out of even more dense metals and materials. And so, yeah. When So what happens is we go up to the space station. And to change those batteries out, we have to launch new batteries in a rocket with astronauts who are going to do a spacewalk to switch the batteries out. And then when they switch those, the depleted batteries, they, they send back down with uh, the rocket that came up to deliver, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Right, sure. And, you know, nowadays, sometimes I think there are, there are whole rockets that can re-enter and land, but usually the way that that happens, the way that they, they, uh, they bring the rocket back down with any, it's not just batteries, they'll just get, it's like, it's like they're making a trash delivery, right? Like, like they load the rocket full of a bunch of stuff that they need <laughs> to get rid of. It, yeah, then send it back. Yeah. Yeah. And, but it's a controlled burned re-entry and they make it land somewhere in the middle of the ocean somewhere, right? Okay. Right. Um, sure. They know that that's going to happen. Sometimes Utah desert, we get that a lot down here. Mm, sure. Right. So I don't know it, why, it, but it, they do. They like it. Over it's there. a big well, wide yeah. area to aim for. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There's the, the, it needs to go down in a place where they know people aren't going to be. Right. Right. They don't want to hurt anybody with the with their batteries and the and the poo bags or whatever else is coming out of there. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. The trash. All the uh, space station leftovers and yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Their uh, their chicken nugget containers and and stuff like that. Mm. Right. Um, <laughs> space the, nuggets. Uh, space nuggets. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, so what happened with this though is this was years ago. This whole pallet of depleted batteries has been been flying around the earth for years actually um because years and years ago i think it was five years ago they they were they had planned to come up and change the battery there's a whole mission that they planned these missions years in advance right mm -hmm. um and so they were in it was part of a whole series of missions to change a bunch of batteries on the the space station and what happened was this particular launch that was going to get this battery was a joint operation between the U.S. and Russia, and they were going to go up in a Soyuz cas capsule or a Soyuz rocket, and um, and just something happened, um, and they had to cancel. The, the, the rocket launch got canceled. So that never happened. That mission never, that spacewalk to, to, to switch them out and then send the depleted batteries back down never happened. But they still had to later... Uh, switch out the batteries at a different time, but they just didn't have the space because the rocket never went up. That particular rocket never went up. They didn't have the space to send the old batteries back down on one of those future missions. So it'd been up there for a while, just sitting there until they had space. Um, and then the, this whole program of that was being uh, underwent to change out all the batteries. At some point, the program halted and the battery pallet was still there it hadn't been taken care of and so nasa basically said well we have to get rid of it <laughs> so uh, i guess we'll we're just gonna push it, up it out of the no. door yeah. <laughs> god you think that you know having space in space shouldn't be a problem like you feel like you could just tie a, a rope to something and just let it dangle outside the uh yeah, we'll just <laughs> it's not going to get blown into the side. It's it's you know, it's out and it's just yeah, dangling, yeah. it's floating. Yeah. Yeah, you'd think so, but I guess weight um That's all true. The and weight I guess is important. In know? the in the space space station is moving. Mm -hmm. It's, you know. It's it's sort of no, like an aircraft. But there's no right? wind or friction for it to Well, like, there is a little bit of friction. There is a is little there? bit. Is there? Okay. Yeah. 
like if you just have, if you had something tied to the side of the space station and it's doing its its orbit but there's no air to to um go against that chunk of whatever's floating out there is it is it going to move back or maybe turn your <laughs> space station around i don't think so i don't think there's that much fr- there's enough friction yeah. to over just stay parallel with it right okay. yeah and there is enough friction with the very thin atmosphere at the level of the space station there is enough friction that over time they have to correct for it with mm-hmm. you know shooting thrusters and stuff mm-hmm. but it's more yeah. about the weight um yeah. causing it to you know they can't they have to get rid of stuff and they can't just yeah. They they have to get rid because as they add new things they have to get rid of things. To it's keep just that funny weight. that, I mean, they have to know it's going to land somewhere, <laughs> right? So they do an analysis of these things, right? They yeah, say, yeah. okay, what's going to happen? They don't just kick it out the door. They just right, they right. Say, they have okay, to be able to say, all right, what's going to happen? Gonna land. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so they did that. They did a whole analysis, and NASA did, did it determined that it it's it's all just going to burn up right mm-hmm. it'll be fine mm-hmm. and um and there's not a lot of even whatever doesn't burn up which they think it's all going to burn up um it's all going to land somewhere Small it's not going to mess in, with so inconsequential pieces that'll land somewhere yeah. yeah they did a whole analysis of the orbit where it could possibly fall and i saw a map of it where it there was there was like nowhere it was mostly over the ocean and the only places it went over land was like unimportant places like the north of france or london um so yeah who cares uh, about we, that we we didn't take into account that damn butterfly flapping its wings in chile yeah right <laughs> threw um, all of our calculations off in fact the path was only supposed to pass over the u.s in one place basically over this guy's house yeah, um, Florida. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and you know they could be uh forgiven for just saying well it's going over the u.s oh no where naples oh okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry sorry listeners in naples so it's incredibly i mean to their to to their defense i guess it was mm-hmm. this the likelihood that this was going to happen was incredibly unlikely mm-hmm. um it was just it, it, almost so little that you wouldn't think about it although some of the other space agencies the european space agency and some other independent organization over in europe all said mm, nasa said it was all going to burn up but that was never likely <laughs> because yeah, they said yeah. that pretty much anything over a certain weight over a certain mass that yeah. re-enters the atmosphere you can almost guarantee that 20 to 40 percent of it is going to survive in some regard right the outside is going to burn off but if it's super yeah. super dense it's right uh wow right so yeah. so that's what happened they think so of course we have to caveat it right but all the evidence points to the funniest part of this whole thing is the is the tweet that the guy who whose house it hit. Um, oh, uh-huh. I didn't know about that. What did he do? Yeah, he made it. Uh let me I'll I'll give you um I'll put a link in the in the chat. But um did he did he start uh, growing like green uh mold all over his whole body once he touched it? Was that um, the, uh... <laughs> That's an ugly link but uh there it is um he said uh it was someone he he tweeted and he said hello uh looks like one of these pieces missed fort myers and landed in my house in naples tore through the roof and went through two floors almost hit my son can you please assist with getting nasa to connect with me <laughs> wow like yeah. it's just so funny to me that the fact that he that... begins his tweet with hello like he's like he's talking to nasa customer service yeah right? like... it's just so funny to me that he's like that he's like this is this is how he's decided to figure this out like like yeah. do you think uh look um something landed on my house that i think came from the space station <laughs> this thing's a real this thing's a such a burrito man look at that thing yeah it is, yeah. yeah it's just nasty yeah, well, yeah. Uh, i would I keep see that tweeted that oh go ahead i see you tweeted to planet four five eight nine what is planet four five eight nine like, yeah so that, i is an official um so i i didn't it's um it's 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 the person's account is an astronomer um and i oh, think they were okay. they were talking about the, it was a tweet referencing the the re-entry of the the one that the, the space command knew about right gotcha okay that happened like five minutes before this thing hit his house and <laughs> and so um, he just replied to that tweet and said by yeah. the way <laughs> the thing you saw the thing yeah. you tweeted about just landed through my I house i think but, it hit yeah. me it hit my house yeah from a legality yeah. standpoint if this happened to me would i be able to keep this or do i have to turn it over 
That's a really good question. Um, I think it has probably a lot to do with uh, with like somebody would want to take a look at it probably and make sure that it's not hazardous. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. That's a good question. I'm more interested in in the insurance claim, right? Like because I think you technically probably could get this covered, but the insurance company is going to have to like coordinate oh. with NASA. To, what if it to was verify it? Yeah. They're going to have to figure out what if this actually came from some, not from the International Space Station, but from something else that was launched by another government. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like this, 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 this guy is in for some, some headache of a, oh of a my, long paperwork and claim. Yeah. <laughs> good Lord. Yeah. I've not seen J.K. Simmons uh, uh, being cheerful about this Allstate commercial. <laughs> right. That thing is, that but, thing's um, crazy. Wow. It's actually not unheard of that space debris damages things um and it, it it's ne space debris has never killed a person actually oh or not. really wow um, i would yeah. i i don't know why i know plane stuff has right plane debris have, have fallen i'm pretty into sure homes yeah. And things. yeah but people have actually been hit by space debris before <laughs> yeah um and it just didn't kill them it, it famously actually in 1997 there's a woman lottie williams was hit on the shoulder by a piece of a Delta II rocket that oh, re-entered. Jeez. Um, and apparently was not injured. Really? Um, yeah. Wow. That's, she got lucky. That's great. Yeah. No kidding. So, uh, In 2002, yeah. there was a six-year-old boy that got hit by a 10-kilogram piece of aluminum from a satellite. So these are astronomical odds, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. especially like this one, this, this, tur this space turd, the fact that it hit this guy's house in Florida... If you do the extrapolate the math outward and say, well, what's the likelihood is his house of all physical homes on the planet would have been hit? I mean, the odds are insane. He'll never win the lottery is what I'm getting at. Yeah, <laughs> or right. or he has the best chance of all. I, I think he spent it is my point. This is it. Oh, this was his luck. You're this done. Was his, yeah. This is yeah. his one in a billion uh, chance. Yeah, I have, this, I have this theory that if you have something really unlucky or lucky happen to you, you're out. You can never win a lottery. It's just the way you're it done. is. Yeah. That's funny. Yes. Yeah. All Wait. random all random occurrence are separate events and the dice the dice have no memory. The yeah. cards yeah. have no memory. That's right. Yeah. They, they call been... that the gambler's fallacy. That's right. <laughs> That's oh right. red it's been this roulette wheel has come up red the last ten spins. It's totally yeah. gonna be black this time. It has to be. It's been holding the black back. <laughs> you right. Know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Always but, been um, on black. If yeah. you Google, uh, or if you go on Wikipedia, actually, and look up list of space debris fall and incidents, then you get a whole list of of all of them um, that have happened over the years. Mm. It probably a list uh, of airplane ones, too, somewhere. And those yeah, almost, almost are always those weird, like, the blue water toilet things, right? The big uh, ice yeah. <laughs> ice chunks. That would scare the yeah. living shit out of me if that crashed through my house. be just like, yeah. we're all going to die. Do not touch or lick the giant blue... Thing. Uh, well, that's uh, that's great news for everybody, yeah, except that yeah. guy in his house. I'm sure his insurance will probably cover it, acts of God and all that, or whatever we do now yeah. when we put it on our policy. Do we still say that on the policy? Because it used to. They would yeah, say, I mean, I still does. "Act yeah, of God." I mean, it's it's so it's so denominational, you know. It really is. Like, what about an act of Vishnu or an act of yeah. Allah or uh, maybe they should say acts or an of act of a science. God. Yeah. Acts of a god, <laughs> like the natural clause. natural occurrence. <laughs> although, although you could argue, well, this is you could say, well, this is a natural occurrence. Well, not really. It's a space station that a man, you know, we put up there. That it's Aren't not natural. We part of nature, though. I mean, I guess so. So, I guess yeah. our our space burrito is as natural as anything else happening. <laughs> Well, anyway, this is all fan, uh, fantastic information about a story that we were just going to rip through and not care that much about. Yeah, but you brought no, this, it. This made it a lot more interesting, a lot more fascinating. Yeah, you brought some hard light to the room. Thank you for doing that. Uh, Bobby, you do a lot of science coverage on your show. Why yeah. don't you tell people what it is, where it is, and what you guys are talking about this week? Well, uh, our podcast is all around science, and you should check that out. But I have one uh, something to say real fast about upcoming TMS Vegas. Have we talked about the board game sign up in a while? Uh, no. Oh, we haven't. No, we should mention that. You should yeah. bring yeah. it up. Yeah, I've looked at it this morning, and um, it looks like there's more board game sessions people have put on there and more people signing up, but, but certainly not as many people that it sounds like are going to be there. But if you go, I know that if you go to the tms vegas viva, discord yeah. channel oh. it's in the pins there i don't know where else it's on have it. it's on viva tms vegas uh, okay. dot com as well let me make sure 
it's a the spreadsheet is a google sheets thing that's all the events that are going on yes. also but the, the ta- a, one of the tabs at the bottom is the board game sign up and big so blue button there, on viva tms vegas yeah. that says uh, board game sign up and it takes there you right go. to what you need yeah so nice. check you should check that out um i know i have a full group of people who are going to play evolution with me um so uh, I'm thinking about cool. bringing a game called Gloom Fairy Tale Gloom that you guys would probably really enjoy mm. playing. That that's um it's a storytelling game is what it really is. It's fairy like a tale. card game, but it's a storytelling card game. For for uh, and you what, do you is there improvisational storytelling by the player? Is that how that works? Basically, yeah. The idea is that you all have a family and they're all based on these fairy tale characters, but it's very like it's very dark. And the goal is you're supposed to make your family of fairy tale characters have the worst life and death possible. Mm. So ever so what you're doing is you're playing cards on your family to make them have a miserable time, but other people are trying to beat you by making your family have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> but Weird. the the storytelling aspect of it yeah. is that you're supposed to every time a card is played, you're supposed to add on to the story that's being told about the families and all of the things that are going on, you know, to justify what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So it's kind of a fun. Someone in the a bunch of people game. on the chat are uh, responding they love that game. So yeah, uh, it's super yeah. fun, really fun game. I'm thinking about bringing that as well. That's cool. So. All right. Yeah, I'm. I uh, since I don't know what might be going on with me and editing and preparing for uh, the show, I, I'm leaving myself open to say, "Oh, you got a space open? Great! I'm going to sit down and play some." Yeah, some... I think I might even do that with this game. Not put a sign up on the thing. I might just bring it and just see bring how it, it see. feels. Yeah, you know? I'm just yeah. going to float. I like floating. So I, I like do floating too. too. And I've yeah. already committed myself to one game. So there you go, man. I will float. But everybody else should sign up. For yeah, sign up. Games. Get in there. If you want us to float yep. to where you are, you'll need to sign up. Uh, although you could probably float as well. There'll be lots of uh, lots of opportunities, even for watchers who are like, maybe I don't want to play, but then you're like, oh, maybe I do, and then you can hop in. We'll make sure there's room. Yeah. Uh, oh, and, and yeah. happy Eclipse Day. I'm sure you guys have already mentioned it. Oh, of yes. course. We have indeed. I got my glasses right here. Can't wait. Uh, uh, Na- uh, NASA says 30, 35 minutes, 20 seconds until they show it or whatever. So. I don't know. I assume they're going to show it as it transitions, right? We're going to start yeah, with yeah. a little bit of off, and then, and then yeah, it'll exactly. They'll they'll show from one of the best places of totality and just have it go, you know, yeah, get the little Corona uh, thing on the outside. All those, and, all yeah. those, uh, all those night attack fans are in Austin, isn't it? Like raining there or something? <laughs> yeah, they're getting. Oh, is it? Cloudy. I know. I know that. Like, weather. yeah, there have been a few places that. Uh, are cloudy, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, I feel bad for all the people who made that trip. Well, I think they, if it doesn't clear, they were going for drove they were going for Founders Day, though. I don't think they were. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah, I yeah. drove to I drove a guy to the airport uh, over the weekend for Lyft. That um, he basically six years ago started planning for this, and he's like, "All right, um, let's get a hotel here. Let's get a hotel there." As soon as hotels became available, he got those oh, wow. with refundable. You know, refundable hotels got multiple flights booked for each of wow. those as soon as those became available for, before prices got jacked up. Rental cars. You can wake up in the morning and decide which way you're going. <laughs> he he basically looked at the four week forecast and said, yeah. "All right, let's cancel the one to uh, Austin. Let's cancel the one to blah blah blah." And he's stuck wow, with Indianapolis. Yeah. And I don't know, I don't know what the weather is like in Indianapolis, but it looks like I've got blue sky. So let's hope it it sticks for the next couple hours. Yeah, it's nice and yeah. sunny and clear here, but. Uh... What's our percentage again here in the Intermountain West? I don't know what we get to see. 67%, I think, for us in Denver. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, we get about 75%. I got some glasses. Okay. We're going to take a look. So. All right. Well, uh, may your eyes uh, handle it, I guess. Or Thanks. Something like that. <laughs> uh, all Around Science, everybody. Go check it out. Yay. Available now. Wherever you get your podcast. Bobby, have a fantastic week, and we'll you see too. you soon. See Bye you, now. Bobby. All right. Yeah, you uh, get 50%. 50? 50. 50. Lame. We got 65. Not a whole lot better. So California getting what, like 30? Something like that? Probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Los Angeles. 48.6% in Los Angeles. San Francisco gets about a third. Okay. So uh, it seems more like a longitudinal change than a latitudinal change, right? Like yep, if the lower yeah. you are, the more. 
Yeah, because that's a small Atlanta, jump. Atlanta's getting, uh, what, 84% it looks like, is what this says. It's pretty good. 84.7. Yeah. Oh, I like those odds. <laughs> They're not odds. Enjoy that, Red Fraggle and Nutamaton. Indeed. Uh... All right, that's it. That's the show. We're done. Um, there will be a Monday show tonight. Check it out. Carter and I will be here at five or sorry, six p.m. Uh, going live, and uh, there may be some other stuff during the day. Don't know yet. Um, we're working on when we're going to be doing our monthly stream for art and stuff like that. That's all coming oh, up. Oh yeah, cool. So watch for that. Um, and all those details can be found at frogpants.com/podcast. There's even like an, a, a link to the calendar, which I never mentioned, that has all the upcoming uh, live show times. So you can check that out. Um, I think that's all I have. Brian, do you have anything else before yeah. we go? I got nothing else. I did a uh, Millennium Falcon stream over the weekend. I've got uh, a couple more here to do maybe this week. So we'll see as we start getting closer and closer to the Vegas event. It's It pulls me away from other things. So I still have a video game cabinet that needs to be decorated. Ooh, look oh, at yeah. That. Trophy. Ooh, that's the prize for the winner night one trophy not not gotta third night trophy this time get it right that's away that's right gotta beat scott at joust gotta beat me at uh tron <laughs> dude you wrecked me in tron just I lucked just out. wrecked yeah, I me at, uh, horrible <laughs> and neither of our sticks worked in exactly right in that game no no so it was like it was really was just a matter of which game came up first it was like okay all right tanks i could drive a little bit but it's really all about the boop, 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 yep. boop. I kind of want to call them early and go, uh, how's your Asteroids Deluxe machine doing? Because <laughs> I really want to play fine it. right now? Could you put some, could you turn it off for the next uh, three weeks and just make sure nobody spills a <laughs> yeah. Pilsner on there? Put Thanks. a big uh, police tape over that for a minute. Just for us. Right. Thanks. Appreciate exactly. it. Yeah. Uh, that is it. We are going there, Claire. First night. Or not first night. Tuesday night. Well, that'll be first night for a lot of people. So, oh wait, not uh, Tuesday. Sorry, no, it's Monday night. Uh, Monday it's the, night. It's the kickoff event. It's the welcome reception. Yeah. So it's our first first technical <laughs> yeah, night. Yeah. And Red Fraggle again is going to be managing the um, the brackets and keeping track of who's playing against who. She's awesome, helping up uh, helping out with that. So awesome. Thank you again, Amy, for uh, for jumping in and, and offering to help with that. Sweet. Uh, that's going to do it for us. frogpantscom TMS is our website. Use it at your leisure. Has links to everything we're doing. That's it. Brian, let's take us out with a song. Okay. Uh, a really hoopy fruit, a.k.a. David Hartnett, wrote in and said, Hey, Shadow and Blinding Light, April 6th is my 36th orbit around the sun, but because I'm a fair-skinned redhead, I would like to seek revenge on that damn star this, this year by having the moon eclipse it for a few minutes on that following Monday, April 8th. Take that, you jerk. <laughs> Uh, anyway, my fiance and I will be road tripping to see the eclipse and having a rocking eclipse theme song for the ride. Oh, I'm sorry. Having a rocking eclipse theme song for the ride home would be amazing. I thereby request Ain't No Sunshine by me first in the Gimme Gimme's or whatever you deem fit for the occasion. P.S. Don't you dare play that old lady happy birthday for me. I'm not that old yet. Love a really hoopy fruit. In the chat. Happy birthday. Just kidding. We won't play the whole thing. <laughs> Just a tiny, tiny taste. Okay? Give, him the, give him the dance remix one. Let's party. Happy birthday. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here is, as requested me first in the Gimme Gimme. See, you thought I was going to play Total Eclipse of the Heart, you fools. Uh, from the album uh, Me First Takes a Break from 2003. It's a cover of Bill Withers' Ain't No Sunshine When She's Gone. Get more at frogpants.com. And some sandwiches. Okay. And some sandwiches.